Glory be to Jesus. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Word of Hope for today. I'm Bishop James Hansen Saki of the Christ Church International. What a blessing again it is to be alive. And I'm grateful to God for your life, that of your family. And I speak over your lives in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that it shall be well with you in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, I want to encourage you from Proverbs chapter 29 and the verse number 22. It says, an angry man stirs up trouble and a furious man abounds in transgression. The Living Bible translation says, a hot-tempered person gets into all kinds of trouble. You see, misplaced anger is a very dangerous thing. Anger has a price tag. It has a price tag. Anger has a price tag. Now, getting angry itself is not an issue. It is how when we misplace the anger and we end up destroying things or destroying relationships. When you realize that truth that anger has a price tag, you are more likely to control the anger in your life. The Bible tells us a hot-tempered man gets into all kinds of trouble. Most of us have seen someone do something really stupid because they were angry. And too many of us have seen the costly and damaging effects on people and families because of uncontrolled anger. The Bible is very specific on the cost of anger. The Bible says it causes arguments. Proverbs chapter 15 and the verse number 18 says anger causes arguments. The Bible also says in Proverbs chapter 14 verse 29, anger causes mistakes. A lot of people have committed mistakes because they were angry. They were angry. They were not following the rule. It also causes you to make foolish decisions. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 17. So you've probably seen all of these results from your own anger and the anger of others. The Bible is also clear on the ultimate conclusion of our inappropriately expressed anger. Proverbs eleven twenty nine says, The fool who provokes his family to anger and resentment will finally have nothing worthwhile left. Please bear this in mind. The fool, the scripture already calls someone who does unprovoked um, anger, you know, un- misplaced anger, puts his family into trouble and will have nothing worthwhile left. So I want you to this morning, as you go about your day, think about the impact anger has on yourself and your family and your relationships. You know, as parents, we are often tempted to use anger to motivate our children. It works in the short term. When you get angry, you put the fear of God or the fear of you into your children. Your children may give you a short term obedience, but you will lose them in the long term. As I've always said at parents rallies, if you shout at a child and try to threaten them, well, because you are bigger than them and they are frightful of you, they will kneel down, but they are standing within them. The end result of misplaced anger is alienation. You alienate the very people you love the most. You cut them out of your life or they withdraw from you because they won't come near you. Eventually, you get more anger back and finally just apathy. No one wants to be around you and that is the dangerous price that you have to pay for uncontrolled anger. The truth is you will always lose when you lose your temper. Take this from me. You will always lose when you lose your temper. You may lose your reputation. You may lose your job. You are rebuked on the job. You get angry and fire back and they fire you. Your children, you will lose them. The love of your husband or wife, when you don't control your anger, you will lose them. This morning, I came to speak to you. Put that anger under control. It's never worth that price tag. It's not your mouth that gets you into trouble with your anger. It's your heart. Therapy is good and important, but even the best therapy in the world can get you a new heart. Only God can do that. When you give your life to him, he gives you his love to replace your hurt. Many people are angry because they have been hurt in the past, but that is not a justified excuse to keep on going on because it will destroy you. God will replace your head with his love and he will give you his peace to replace your frustration and his power to replace your insecurity. You know he will answer when you pray. When you pray and say to God as the psalmist prayed in Psalm 141 verse 3, Lord help me control my tongue. Help me be careful about what I say. As you pray this prayer today, I pray God hear you. Psalm 141 verse 3, in the name of the Lord Jesus. There are three important things to avoid when you are angry. I pray in the name of Jesus that you avoid those things. Avoid saying things you don't have to say. Avoid 
being around a company or a group in hearing things you don't have to hear and avoid listening to what your heart is telling you to do immediately. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that the Lord hear you, the Lord favor you, the Lord himself defend you in the mighty name of Jesus. Ephesians 4 26 says, if you become angry, don't let your anger lead you into sin. When you become angry, don't let the anger lead you into sin. We all get angry from time to time. We may handle it differently, but none of us can escape the emotion entirely. But just because we get angry doesn't mean we are sinning. The Bible says if you become angry, don't let your anger lead you into sin. That's the first thing you must bear in mind. Paul tells us in this passage not to let our anger lead us into sin. That means that anger isn't necessarily sin. The truth is we can deal with our anger in both appropriate and in appropriate ways. Unfortunately, many of us express our anger in ways that get us further from our goals instead of moving us closer to them. For example, these three things you must avoid, which I said earlier on. Number one, don't suppress your anger. Don't store it up inside. When you suppress anger without expressing it in proper ways, it's like taking a soft drink bottle and shaking it up. One day it's going to pop up. It will impact your body eventually. And doctors tell us, a number of physical ailments are often brought on by suppressed anger. So don't suppress the anger, number one. Number two, don't repress the anger. When you repress your anger, you simply deny it is there. Deny your anger often enough and you'll be depressed. And I want you to know, when I used to do counseling, and I keep doing that, you hear many people tell me they were depressed, but they were really just angry. They thought that Christians should never get angry. So they bottled it up inside. Denying anger is a sin. It's called lying. And number three, don't express your anger in inappropriate ways. We can express anger in a variety of inappropriate ways. We pout, we spit, sarcasm, manipulate others, or do something stupid. None of those approaches get us anywhere near the result we are looking for. So what we need to do with the anger is number one, confess it. You don't just admit the anger, but you also admit the cause. You tell God and whoever you are angry with that you are frustrated or you feel threatened. The more honest you can be in your relationship, the easier it will be to get to the root cause of your anger. And the thing is that you may have grown up in a home where anger was consistently expressed in inappropriate ways. Inappropriate anger is learned, but it can be unlearned too. And you don't have to stay the same. You can start changing how you deal with anger today because it may cost you that job. It will cost you your family. It will cost you your children. It will cost you money. It will cost you your own life because you got so angry and you were on a road rage and you got angry at another driver and end up rather making the most silly mistakes and end up having an accident to destroy yourself or your vehicle and it will cost you more money. Whatever be the case, may God give you grace this morning to control that anger and follow the steps of shared with you, it shall be well with you. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Whatever is the cause of your anger, that uncontrolled anger, may grace give God give you grace. May God be merciful to you. May God deal with your heart in the name of Jesus as you submit it to him this morning. Whatever has been the cause of the anger, may God help you to overcome it. In Jesus' name, may you be a better version of yourself today. And may you be loving. May you be caring. May you be able to connect again. And may you not lose the people that God has placed in your life to be a blessing to you because you express anger in an inappropriate way. I pray this day, grace find you. Restoration come your way. Mercy find you. In Jesus' most excellent and holy name. Amen and amen. Have a blessed and fruitful day. I love you. Bye-bye.